You're with Julian on the Brown Note and how Saudi money and Middle Eastern money and big money in general is a very clear and present danger to world football. So I did a piece last week on how the new football fans were the worst thing to have happened to the game and how women fans were the antidote. So the new male fans who followed celebrity players like Cristiano Ronaldo or Lionel Messi or now Neymar, the most obvious transfer to the Saudi league in history. Moneybags has never found a paycheck he wouldn't chase. Um, how they follow the player from club to club and they no longer even support a club and how dangerous that is, but perhaps even more dangerous, is embodied by the Saudi league. And it's not just the Saudis, it's also Qatar, it's also into Miami, it's the mega money clubs that have existed in places like uh, China and Russia um, and are seeking to reshape the game in a manner that gives them a seat at the high table, which is completely unearned on any level other than financial and wildly hypocritical when it comes to the touchy-feely, holistic na nature of FIFA and UEFA. Channel 10 are showing the Saudi League in Australia for free. What the hell is that about? So we're now in the process of getting everyone around the world to enable and validate Saudi Arabia, are we? The Over the last couple of days, it's, I mean, why Channel 10 playing the Saudi League on free to air? And in the last couple of days, it's come out that there's negotiations between UEFA for the world's most valuable cup competition, the Champions League, which is consisted originally of the champions of every league in Europe. But then when the money bags teams in Europe decided that they wanted to play it every year, they extended it to include everyone up to fourth place so that the biggest clubs wouldn't miss out on the enormous revenue of this competition watched globally the biggest competition probably is still the premiership the english league uh, and next to that champions league might be bigger um, but it's certainly the biggest cup competition of course they're now in negotiations with the saudi league to perhaps allow the winner of the saudi league to participate in the champions league this is absolutely reshaping everything about the game into Miami, I believe, are in talks to do the same with the largest club competition in Latin America, despite having absolutely nothing other than money as a reason to do it. I take it, given that the clubs in Europe are subject to very <laughs> intermittently enforced but very serious financial fair play rules, which are the fact that you can't have very wealthy benefactors bankrolling your club with $100 million players that go far beyond the amount of revenue your club generates. And Manchester City, the current champions of Europe and champions of England, are currently embroiled in a very, very large court case. Over this, we just saw Juventus suffer again with um, punitive action based on financial fair play. Uh, if you're going to allow this Champions of Saudi into the Champions League, I take it you're going to make them abide by the financial fair play awards and rules that the rest of the European competition has? Make no bones about it. The ultimate game here for clubs like the Mega Money Russia Club, uh, I forget their name now, I think in Dagestan there's been this mega club there for years. <coughs> teams like Inter Miami and teams like the, the big two in Saudi Arabia, is to form a global super league, destroying national leagues and having it so that teams like Saudi teams can play against Barcelona and Manchester United every week to elevate them into this higher stratosphere. Now, they tried this trick a few years back by creating a European super league that would consist of these clubs in Europe playing each other each week. And it was shot down in flames. It was crucified in days because they needed the Premiership clubs and six of them were told that they would have to exit the Premier League, the most lucrative league in any sport, I think, in the world. And they hadn't banked on that. So they just all quit. The reason that these things become popular is that 
clubs have gone massively into debt to keep up with the arms race of buying multi-hundred million dollar players now for years. So we've got clubs like Manchester United that are virtually a billion dollars in debt because of the financial mismanagement in the, the most appalling deal in the American owners buying them in the first place. But also you get teams like Barcelona, Real Madrid, Inter Milan spending so much money to keep up on players that their own domestic leads don't generate the same revenue as the Premiership does. So they can't, they're just massively in debt and they keep getting off the hook on the financial fair play awards. But then you're introducing teams like Inter Miami and the biggest Saudi clubs that aren't even involved in these financial fair play awards. And then there's the issue of human rights. How are we treating Russia at the moment when it comes to human rights and the way that they're um, barred from uh, virtually any competitive sport? Yet we've got Saudi Arabia who have been up to their necks in the human rights abuses in the war in Yemen for years, which is under a ceasefire at the moment. I do have a wonder whether this was designed to promote the Saudi League away from the auspice of being criticised for the human rights abuses and civilian death toll in the war in Yemen, which Saudi Arabia was a massive part of. But we don't care when Saudi does it, apparently. Apparently, the people of Yemen aren't as worthwhile as the people of Ukraine. Not to mention, they shove rainbow flags down our throats, uh, FIFA and UEFA. Well, I'm pretty sure Qatar and Saudi aren't exactly the biggest promoters of gay and trans rights on planet Earth, let alone women. How are we going to go with women's games? Now we're promoting the FIFA World Cup. How are they going to go with that? You don't care, do you? They are up for hire. Any amount of money can buy them. They just don't care. They shove all of this human rights garbage down our throats and they don't adhere to it when it comes to countries like Saudi Arabia or Qatar. So we've got that combined with these new fans and the focus on the highest money at the table. Soccer and football was always a working class sport. And now we've got this Kardashian level celebrity worship going on. And this hypocrisy from FIFA and UEFA who have shown time and again they're just available for the highest bidder and they will forget about human rights abuses, gay rights, trans rights and women's rights the second a big money player like Saudi sits at the table. They are looking, make no bones about it, to make structural changes to things like the Premiership and the Champions League being so dominant where they can sit at the high table themselves. People like Arsene Wenger have been pushing this for years. We already held a World Cup at the wrong time of year, an incredibly appalling thing to have done. And he, I think he was proposing that we hold a World Cup every two years because basically they want to play all the time. So anything that has gone from 100 years of football and soccer history will be eradicated just so these big money nations and clubs can play at the top level all the time. They'll keep expanding or trying to expand the number of nations in the World Cup and making sure that they're there for the, the longer games. Um, this is appalling stuff, and we're susceptible to it now in the West, in uh, European football, because so many of the clubs have spent so much money and are in debt that they're no doubt being offered caveats. And we should stop Middle Eastern buyers owning premiership clubs, because what do you think they're going to do? This money isn't good for the sport. And it's not good for the premiership clubs to be, so many of them are likely in, within five years to be owned by Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia. What do you think they're going to do when it comes to voting on things like, let's just forget about the premiership and go and do this multi-super league thing? So uh, I think, you know, promoting um, the one really good thing, and it's a, it's a trite thing to mention, but is how gay women's football is. Women's football is grassroots, it's honest, it's working class, it adheres to the values and structures of football, and it's got a huge gay contingent. So we're going to butt up with FIFA and UEFA when it comes to the fact that we're promoting the women's game, by far the best thing to have happened to the sport when it comes to countries like Saudi Arabia. And the hypocrisy that they will show in turning a blind eye won't be tenable. So anyway, yeah, that's my latest bit on soccer. This